right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Talking on Purpose with Tori, the podcast and internet show. It is Tuesday, November the 10th, and I am giving God praise for this new day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I am, we are rejoicing and are glad in it. As you all know, I cannot necessarily see the comments as they're coming in with the slides that I am providing and the scriptures and everything that's going to support this episode. So please forgive me. I'm saying greetings and hello to each of you right now. Um, if my sister friend is here, good morning, Detria. Good morning to the Moore Manor. Uh, good morning to my, my bro, Brian Sales at Warriors Collection, LLC, and anyone else, Holly, um, Casey, Stephanie, Lisa, anyone else who has jumped on, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to share this to my other pages and private groups as well. Please share this um, on your page if you have the ability to do so. If you are commuting or on your way to work, please do it safely. I am praying for your journey as you are going to and from that you have a fantastic day on purpose and that everyone and everything that you need to do if it can be handled by email, amen, that that is what will happen. Okay, yes, yes, amen. Okay, so I'm going to share this really quickly to the other pages. And as you all are coming in, drop in the comments. I will see them um, after this is um, ended. But drop in the comments. Let me know what you're doing today. Let us know if we can pray for you. If there's been, do you have a praise report? Is there something happening in your life? Please let us know. All right. I am going to stay actually very close to the audio podcast that has already been released. It was available. Um, it's available now, I should say. And you can get to that on my website, OurGivenPurpose.com if you want to, to listen. But I am going to try my best to stay very close to the topic because it is a great one. Not that anything we talk about within the word of God is... It's edifying to our spirits. It's good for correction. And we can make sure that we are aligned and walking in our purpose with God. So, okay, that's, did I share? Okay, yes, I share. Woo. No, it didn't. Bless my heart. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so tired of fear is today's episode title. Tired, okay? Tired. I don't like to talk about being tired first thing in the morning, but this is a different type of weariness and that tired of being told that you can't do something, that tired of being told that this is the posture that you must have in order for us to feel okay because we are insecure. So we need to make sure that we continue to push you down and not allow you to really develop and cultivate that type of authority or leadership that we see within you but it, it actually makes us feel better if we continue to suppress what we can see God is trying to bring out. That type of tired. Oh, did I, I hope that made sense. I'm not trying to do an ouch this morning, but that was almost an ouch because I'm guilty of that. I have done that. I have seen where people, it's like, okay, they need to be elevated. They need to be encouraged. And because that could lead to them going above and beyond where I was, I wanted to suppress it. But, but God... But God, that's not the way we do that because there is no one higher than he. And when we look at things through that lens, everybody, we can applaud people with the quickness. OK, it is you be, go ahead, sis. Yes, yes. You. Amen. I am proud. I am excited. I am grateful to be in connection with you. Go ahead, bro. You got this. Yes, it is. It's that versus mm, they doing more than me. Mm, they better than me. No, there isn't any of that. It is just being equally yoked and walking forward and knowing that whatever they are doing, they are willing to teach you or you can at least learn and glean from that and continue to push forward and put your own incredible flair to it and make it your own and just keep moving. And that getting to that point is just so amazing. And it's so joyful to be able to watch and see people doing what God has led them to do and seeing Christ through them. Because that means that if that person is doing what they're supposed to be doing, that those who they come in contact with are going to be positively impacted by that. And because we are all body within the body of Christ, we are now just pointing towards our Lord, our Savior. Okay. 
didn't mean to got a little riled up there for a moment okay amen okay i said i shared i welcomed you looking at my outline I, like i said we are going to really stick with scripture this morning um about the blind man i just think this is just so appropriate for for today and for me and i just needed this and it just blessed my heart and i want to make sure that i share it here so let's go to the lord in prayer father we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your, your word. We thank you for you continuously providing for us and just allowing us to be who you need us to be. We thank you for helping us to realize that we need to forgive and that we need to continue to purify our hearts, that it needs to be a daily communication with you, Lord, that as the mud and the slander and the gossip and all those things just kind of come into our lives because we have no control over the outside world, but as it comes in, we quickly filter it out with your word, Lord. We purify it with your love. Amen. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, and we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In your name, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So if you have your Bibles or you have the ability to, you know, pull up two screens, however you need to do this, I'm fine with it, but I'm going to put the scriptures up and it's coming, we're coming, mm, excuse me. We are looking at Luke chapter 18, Mark, uh, yeah, Mark chapter 10 and Matthew chapter 20. So if you want to go ahead and, you know, put some bookmarks or just jot them down, I will have these. These are also listed in the description area. I did uh, put those up there. And of course, if you go to the website and you click on uh, podcast, you can get to all of this there because there is a the show notes from the from the actual audio. So all of that is actually there as well as some other notes and, and things. So I just wanted to alert you to that. Okay. So tired of fear. We're talking about the blind, the blind man. And while these scriptures, I'm not going to say that they contradict each other because they do not. Um, could this have possibly been, been two separate events? Of course it could have. I will entertain that. I have no issue with it. But I am going to refer to the blind man as Bartimaeus because he is named in Mark chapter 10. Luke and Matthew do not name him. And I believe one of these, I can't remember which one, uh, uh, says there was actually two. And the reason that Mark named Bartimaeus was because he was the one who spoke up. So I just want to make that um, clarification here at the onset, but let's go ahead and read. And I will definitely encourage you to read these three passages in your own study time. This is just the beginning. You have to do your work as well. So this is just that primer that, oh, let me, let me go in and look at that. Let me jot some notes. Let me, let me pray and meditate on this. So Luke chapter 18, verses 35 through 43. Yes. Okay. And I am reading the Lexham English Bible translation. Now it happened that as he drew near to Jericho, a certain blind man was sitting on the side of the road begging. And when he heard a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. And they told him, Jesus, the Nazarene is passing by. And he called out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him that he should be silent. But he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stopped and ordered him to be brought to him. And when he approached, he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, that I may regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, regain your sight. Your faith has saved you. And immediately he regained his sight and began to follow him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave God praise. I want to bring your attention back to Luke 18, 41. What do you want me to do for you? That's what Jesus said. Jesus is all knowing. He knows all, he sees all, he understands all. But yet he asked him, he asked the blind beggar what it was that he wanted him to do. And I thought, how amazing is this, that this man, this blind beggar, Bartimaeus, sitting by the side of the road, wanting to know who it was, what was the uproar, what was the excitement about? 
And they said, Jesus is coming. So that meant that Bartimaeus knew who Jesus was. And he knew that he had the capacity to heal him. And he cried out. But the crowd, no, you, you good. You good. You don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need to bother him. Mm. You don't need to bother him. You're going to be, you're going to be all right. We got you. Okay, that's a whole word right there. I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to come back to, oh, Jesus. Let me, like I said, I want to stay within the vein a little bit of the podcast, but I'm going to circle back to that one because how many times, let's circle, I'm, I didn't even circle, we just right here. How many times have you wanted healing, needed healing, needing or even acknowledging and understanding what you you need in order to function as a complete human being with Christ? You knew what you needed, but somebody told you to be quiet. Somebody hushed you. Somebody said, no, you're not worth it. You're not worthy of Jesus coming in and saving or extending grace or kindness to or even just an inkling of love. No, you're not worth it. It's not your time. It's not your season. (laughs) If you have ever been told that, please leave a comment. Let us know. How did you handle that? Is God... God is with us now. Let me just say this. God is with us. He's always there. He never leaves nor he forsakes us. It is us who need to just be willing to stand up and say, Lord, this is what I need. If it is in your will, please grant me this. If it is within, if I am aligned with you, Lord, please, I need this because if I do, I'm going to shout all the more loudly for you. I'm going to glorify you even more. And I will be able to do things that I could not do for myself. And I would not have to depend on your other sons and daughters. This blind man wanted to be a man. He wanted to do things in his own. He he just wanted to, to work for God. He wanted to be able to see. He didn't want to be on the side of the road begging people for handouts and hand-me-downs and leftovers. Amen. He wanted to be able to work and to do things. And the first thing he did was when he got up, he glorified God and he followed. When we suppress other people and keep them away from getting that complete healing, be it spiritually, mentally, or even physically, we're doing a great disservice to the rest of the body. We don't know who that person is going to come in contact with. We don't know what their transformation and their testimony will do for someone else's life. That, mm. okay. I'm going to put up these facts about this story. Okay. That's what we're going to, we're going to go ahead and do that. Amen. Okay. So the facts about this story, do I have it? Yes. Okay. So number one, the disciples and this, these lists of facts, sorry, let me pull it back. The list of facts, the reason I am putting this up is, like I said, it's in Luke, it's in Matthew, and it's in Mark. It's the same story. Whether you agree on that or not, it's okay. We don't have to debate that. But I wanted to pull out the facts of the story to to look at this in a contextual manner, but also just, okay, where did all these points line up and what happened? So we can keep the main thing the main thing, okay? All right. So the facts, I have 10. So number one. And there are more, there are more, but these were just the 10 that I pulled out, okay? Okay, now, here we go. Number one, the disciples and followers of Christ were close to Jericho. Number two, a blind man named Bartimaeus, who was named Mark, was sitting by the road and learned that Jesus was there. Number three, the blind man cried out for mercy. Number four, the people near him told him to be quiet. Number five, the blind man, Bartimaeus, cried out louder. Number six, Jesus stopped. Number seven, Jesus asked a question. Number eight, the blind man requested his sight be restored. Number nine, Jesus healed him. Number 10, the newly healed man followed Christ. So going back to the blind man's story, he could have continued to sit on the roadside. He could have, when they hushed him, he could have become afraid of that and decided to just sit back down. But he was tired of doing that. He got tired, right? So for clarity, hmm, I'm going to ask these questions. And this is something for you to 
honestly have that moment. But ask God or ask yourself first, what do you need Jesus to help you through? What do you need Jesus to heal? And in order, pause that for a second, in order to get healing, you first have to acknowledge what it is that's hurting. <laughs> what is hurting in your life? What is going on that you know that you need that healing of? First acknowledge it so then God can come in and remove it or give you the, the wherewithal in order to deal with it. But it has to be acknowledged first. If you don't acknowledge it, you can just keep running the, the road of sitting beside the road and having people help you. You can become that blind beggar. Anytime, I'm just going to insert this. When we go to the doctor, be it in person or virtually now, hallelujah. But when we go, the first thing they ask is, what's hurting? What's the problem? On a scale of one to 10, where's your pain? Where is, you know, they want to know at least a general vicinity of what the issue is. Now, granted, God knows all, but he also wants us to understand and know ourselves because he's given us a spirit of love, of power, and of self-control. And if we can think about, okay, it's my head, it's my heart, it's my stomach, it's my leg, it's this. If we can go in and acknowledge what it is, then those steps to take the, well, the steps to healing become more visible. We understand what it is we need to do. So acknowledge what it is that needs to be healed. And if you don't know, then pray for the clarity to be able to figure that out. So then you can take the proper steps. Okay. I also, you goodness, who I did a interview. This was probably a year ago with Dr. Andrea Hart and she talked about the the trauma of how people how we as especially women but how we as people will wait till it our pain is at a 10 that we've just gone on and on and on and on and we wait till that pain level gets at a 10 before we will even seek medical attention and i don't want you to be at a 10. when you see that that thing is starting to bother and frustrate you at a two that's when you come on out and say oh okay it's not about complaining or whining or thinking that you're not strong enough. It is, I'm going to get this thing correct so I don't have to have somebody else take care of me. I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that I am in pain here so I don't have to depend on someone else later. I am going to go ahead and cry out to God now because he is present now and I'm going to seek him for my healing because I know that he is all powerful. Okay, organize, let's organize, amen. Hmm. So the blind man needed to adjust his posture first. He needed to go ahead and say, okay, I got to stand up. I need to cry out. You hushed me. I'm going to cry out louder. So the organization, I'm going to ask you this. What do you need to embrace and who or what do you need to let go of? So once you have received that clarity of what it is that needs to be healed, how you need to be helped, that very next thing is organizing. How do I need to adjust my posture? Prepare. So like Bartimaeus, you and I may have to pass people because remember Jesus called him. He said, bring him to me. So that meant that Bartimaeus needed to pass by those people who were trying to hush him. He needed to move through that crowd of folks that was like, no, you don't need this. No, he don't be bothering him. You okay over here? He had to pass by those people. Now, however that's showing up and however that's resonating with you, please write that down and, and keep that as a focus because the word of God is powerful. It's so powerful. Those people that you may have to pass on the way to your healing, it might be painful. It might be painful to see them. They are still going to be talking. They didn't just get quiet, just like Jesus didn't quiet the storm when Peter walked on the water. Those people are still going to be saying stuff as you're trying to walk towards Christ. There's still going to be there's still going to be some chatter, some gossip, some something that's going to pop off. Okay, just keeping it real. You're going to have that moment where you're going. You're you might want to sit back down and say, No, that's okay. Never mind. I don't need it. I don't need it. But I encourage you to keep going. Keep pressing forward. You've stood up. You, your voice is being heard. Don't stop. Don't stop. Do not stop. Hmm. Just had to give just a second for the Holy Spirit. Mm. 
Amen. So please, I want you to read all of the scriptures, excuse me for a moment. Please read all of the scriptures. I will have them listed here, um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and clarify, organize, and prepare. Again, the show notes for the podcast, those are a little bit more um, put together, I should say, the description box, but I will drop in the in the comments and, and add some additional. So, okay, that is it. That is it. Tired of fear. Amen. We are nearing the very end of 2020. And like you, um, I had a vision and I thought that certain things were going to go one way and they ended up being something completely different. And I am giving God praise for all of it. I have learned so much. I have connected with some incredible people. I've had to let go of some people. I had to walk past some people. And that was difficult. That was incredibly difficult. And it's a difficult process, but it's not something you cannot go through when you are looking to God's unchanging hand. You can do it. So I want to encourage you. I pray that you are inspired, that you've heard something today that resonated with you, that you will share it on your page, either this video or the actual podcast, um, or do both. I would appreciate it. That increases our reach. Um, Quick shout outs. Let me do that. Shout outs on purpose. I know I said a few at the beginning, but I also just want to bring the attention to our Patreon contributors. Thank you so much. Thank you for encouraging. Thank you for being part or partnering with our given purpose, the ministry. I'm just so grateful to each of you. A few shout outs. Irvine St. Belus, published author and contributing writer of Daily Bible Study with Purpose. Lisa Segant, founder and host of Purpose Without Apology. You can reach her at www.lisasegant.com. Amen. And she is also a contributing writer for Daily Bible Study with Purpose. Let me know if you all are reading that. I, I hope that you are and you're using it in your in your everyday moments, if you will. Um, and a special thank you to my mama, Diana L.W. Pullman, for being the main contributor for that. I am so grateful for her her willingness uh, to do to do this. So yes, amen. I pray that each of you has a fantastic day on purpose. Keep fighting the crowds, walk on through it, pass by those people. It might hurt a little bit, but in the end, you're going to just feel so much more joy to be able to reach back and let them know how they can let go of anger, arrogance, pride, and fear to do it for themselves. Submit to love and let bitterness be cast away. Have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday.